Welcome to the Creative Playing Podcast Network. Join us as we review our favorite RPGs, collectible card games, MMOs, video games, PC games, and bring up interesting topics and things that we'd like to share with everyone. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. It's oh, I thought you were waiting for food. So if you need water, I can make water happen for you. I'm that kind of person. If you... Oh, the ladies are fed. Oh, no, three of us. I know. Hello. Hi. But, um, I didn't I wanted see to check you, in. darling. I don't More really know how channel. I missed you <laughs> with the beers. <laughs> it must have been a glamour. You know, it, it may have been the grey, which like definitely helped you to camouflage yourself you into the the haze of glory that sort of surrounds you. So it was just like a blurry, glory cloud. <laughs> Sometimes one aims for that. Excellent. I don't believe we've met before, so this is delightful. Uh, this well, is Gandalf. Gandalf is like a twin man. <laughs> oh, Gandalf, I'm proud of your work. <laughs> so, but so perhaps we should start by introducing ourselves, Gandalf. This <laughs> <laughs> hat's up. Oh, right now, oh, yes, just, just throw the hat. <laughs> throw oh, it. Yes, my name is Icy, and today I'm cosplaying as Gandalf, along with a whole merry crew of other elves and dwarves and hobbits today. <coughs> I am JD Cosplay, or Boromir, kind of. I lost my cape because it's too hot. And, uh, but you're all, you also have, like, another name. Oh, Jonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know my you by this name. My legal birth name is Jonna. The one we can find you by, JD Cosplay or Jonna. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm Madame Askew, and I am prohibited from using microphones. Because I abuse them <laughs> terribly, and you don't want to know how. Uh, mostly, I beat them about the you know, head. I don't want to know. I know I'm terrible. I just tell you. Why does have a Um, Godzilla is a strong, silent type. Or when he speaks, people have a hard time understanding him. They're like, ah, ah, and they're like, what do you want? And they run away, and it's terrible. He just wants tea. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I'm Madame Askew. I make costumes, and I do silly things. <laughs> yeah, that's such a dumb thing. Right. <laughs> so now, you're, you're not in steampunk today, but you both do steampunk. We yes. do. And I mean, Jonna, I've seen a great many of your beautiful cosplays. Yes, over the years, we've known each other for quite some time. We have, even though you live so far away. I know, but it's like, that's what happens in steampunk. Eventually, we all meet each other. It's not that big a community. <laughs> it may be global, but I'm like, oh, right, my friends in Italy. I mean, we haven't met in person, but we share, like, eyeliner tips, don't you know? <laughs> Sometimes lost in translation, but the verbs are all right. So, and then, e- I, see. I see. Thank you. We have not met before, we darling. We have not, but John and I have been good friends for quite some years. Um, and we've done uh, quite a few uh, steampunk groups together, and probably our most famous was our uh, Wizard of Oz steampunk group. I think I saw pictures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lovely. She was the scarecrow. Oh, you were the scarecrow. Marvelous. Oh, look. 
Look, this is Golda. Golda is one of the most amazing humans in the universe. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she has literally kept me alive this weekend, <laughs> mostly by throwing food at me and telling me to eat. I have more in my bag for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And look at her awesome head. <laughs> my friend's kid picked it out. It's pretty <coughs> awesome. It, it goes well with your e earrings, too. Oh, I can't Are you wearing them. bang and... No, not no, to this oh. today. Oh, right. I just have a simple. Simple. Sometimes she has bang and kapow, is that right? Oh, That's good. From the comic books. Yeah. Your panel. All right, we, <laughs> we have to thank you. So, um, I mean, I could just like throw out questions because I'm well, are bossy. Are we going to questions or are they going to ask questions? Well, do we want to talk a little bit about our process and then open it up for questions? Okay. That work, does that work for you all? Yes. 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 Good. Then we'll do that. That sounds good. Because you're all very charming. You know, ponder some questions. We'd like to answer them. So, um, Jana, how did you get started in steampunk? Mine was a roundabout way. I actually started with Lolita <laughs> because I love the Japanese Lolita style. I mean, and that just progressed into steampunk because I didn't even realize a lot of the Lolita stuff is steampunky except shorter. Um, so it was an easy transition because, like, most of my clothes were just. Boop. Went over. And, and you've been sewing for a long time, have you not? Yeah, since I was little. My grandma taught me on Barbie clothes. Aww. Aww. Yes. And so it was funny because I tried to make Barbie clothes like a year and a half ago, and I'm like, never again. I don't know how I did this as a child. They're so small. I little know. fingers. When my little fingers were, yeah, when they were littler, it was hard, but now it's like, oh. I mean, all sleeveless all the time to heck with that arm sky on Barbie clothes. <laughs> no, Barbie can go bare arms. <laughs> she gets tube dresses now. They're just straight <laughs> seam. In light like skirts. <laughs> and perfect. Yep. Now, what about you, RIC? I've been sewing for about 15 years now. Um, but I started off similar when my grandma taught me when I was a wee child and with rags from the kitchen and we would tie them and make skirts and pretend, and which evolved to doll clothes and then evolved to costumes. And then I met Jana, um, and we went to Leprechaun, and I love tea. And then oh. when I found the world of steampunk, it just was fired up by my love of tea. We host uh, monthly tea parties, high teas. So I love has... you so much right <laughs> now. I mean, I kind of like tea. <laughs> a little bit. It's an addiction? It is an No, addiction. I can stop. <laughs> After one more cup. Whoa. Not <laughs> that soon. Maybe after a few bats. Yeah, no, I think my um, record, I think we decided was eight pots of tea in a day. Some things are better in excess. Um, yeah, yeah tea is definitely on tea. that list. Yes. yes. And, well, not chocolate. No chocolates. I don't need chocolate at all. Oh. Well, I mean, especially with your costumes. No, this, chocolate. This, <laughs> this was a very hard point in our relationship. <laughs> I know. She's like, I want to cook and bake stuff with you, but everything you want to bake is chocolate. And I'm like, it's no, true. we got to exclude the chocolate. No. We've okay. come to many quarrels over chocolate. Do you like vanilla? I love vanilla. All right, then. At least it's not, you know, lost. You're not lost. You have vanilla no. and, and butterscotch. butterscotch. And butterscotch. And oh. butterscotch. All right, good, because we'll always have butterscotch. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, some of you probably heard me talk about how I came to steampunk in a lengthy and flamboyant way involving lemons yesterday. <laughs> yes, and Jerry yeah. Lannister under your skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I you had to be there, and it was late. I don't think that's how I came to steampunk. <laughs> I think that is how I have found the high point of my steampunk <laughs> experience. So, um, right, uh, my grandmother also taught me a bit about sewing, but it was embroidery and hand sewing and, um, you know, fixing buttons and things. But all of my aunties sew, and my um, one of my cousins is a professional costume maker, 
a designer in New York, and she travels the world. It's been very edifying, because every time someone says, you should do theatrical costumes, I say, oh no. Mm. I know about that industry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but so I grew up around all these women sewing, and so I kind of picked up a little bit by osmosis. And then one lovely summer in Santa Fe, I decided I wanted a medieval costume, and I didn't know how to use a sewing machine. But how hard could it be? <laughs> <laughs> and so I dove right in, and the rest is history. That was a very hard summer, FYI. <laughs> it also involved dying. I learned a lot of things about just how hard things can be. So, Yeah, that seam ripper, when you stab yourself, you just slip. <sighs> Good times, but you know, blood for the blood god. If you don't bleed on it, it's not a project. Hey, so and if it's, it's good luck. fabric, you'll never it doesn't know matter. It. <laughs> and you know what? Saliva. Your yes. own saliva mm -hmm. will take that blood right out. Now, sometimes clients do not want to know you've been licking them. <laughs> <laughs> That's been sterilized. <laughs> Promise. So, um, now, what is some favorite lesson you have about costuming, especially for steampunk? I mean, you are bold enough to wear a beard today, on yes. this day, with these temperatures. Well, two weeks ago, it wasn't in the 118s, it was in the 80s, and very low 90s. I was much bolder then. <laughs> <laughs> but blood, sweat, and tears, a costume's not a costume unless you put your all into it. But probably my favorite lesson is accessories. I love the steampunk accessories. And don't get me wrong, I love corsets and skirts and um, all the above, but the accessories, I feel, really add the sparkle, especially when you're toting around a glass eye. Oh, really? And you've seen my steampunk scarecrow. That's true, I just forgot about the, the, I mean, like, I'm hazy on the world, <laughs> so that's a thing for Have me. you been topping off your tea this morning? I haven't had any tea yet this oh. morning. Oh, well, that just explains it all. I do, that's how I feel, too. <laughs> it was a tea explosion, anyway. <laughs> I didn't get it, it exploded. What about you, Jonna? Okay. Well, I think because we live in such a hot state, it is so very important to, like, on instance where you want to layer, bake your layers. If you're not going to see part, you don't need that extra layer because it's just too hot. So you'll add, like, you know, a fake little gusset or underskirt so you can't see, you know, the top and the bottom because it gets way too hot there. A little bit. Yeah. Now, I will say that the canvas lining has been a very edifying experience. Um, but perhaps my favorite lesson is about corset making and how if you buy the, um, the tape, the twill tape that they make especially for the boning channels, which looks so sassy when you sew it on the outside, and which some lovely person told me would make corset making ever so much easier, because you could just sew it right on the inside, and you wouldn't have to put your boning channels in. Well, the thing is about twill and 12 hours of corset wearing is that it will rub through your chemise and then rub through your skin. And the rubbing through your skin part is edifying. <laughs> and I don't recommend it in the desert because we perspire yeah. into that, you know, delightful new hole in your body. <laughs> See, the other one is when you get the plastic bony and it breaks. Don't. It's like when you're like out somewhere and you have nowhere to change or, you know, and it's like, oh my God, it's pitchy. And then it's drawing blood. It, no plastic boning it pretty much should be set on fire. <laughs> in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So is there any other personal anecdotes you'd want to add? Or should we open it up for some questions? I don't think we can make it a, you know. Questions? Yeah. All right, darlings. Raise some hands. Otherwise I'll call on you. <laughs> and if 
you. I'm forced to answer or no. ask a question. Right. Yes, hello. No, no. hi, <laughs> how are you? Look at you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you know what? I have been known to chase people down in my bustle and ask them untoward questions <laughs> about their goggles. <laughs> like, how did you My goggles them? are spiky and shiny. They are <laughs> spiky and shiny. Did you hone those spikes yourself? Nope. Do you polish them every morning? No, but I wish I did. <laughs> you, you could polish them. There is some delightful silver polish. It works a treat. Any questions? No. Yeah. Right. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. It is not the age of asking strange women in corsets questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I respect that. What is your name? Me? Do we need to know my name? <laughs> <laughs> now we do. Well, I mean, I could give you a name. She's very good at it. No. <laughs> no. 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 Um. <laughs> He's still learning how to be a gentleman. All right. Well, it happens slowly sometimes. <laughs> and with effort. What about you, madam? My name or if it I have any questions? Both, either, all of the above. What is the smallest you ever got your waist to with corsets? Oh, um, I think I can cinch down about six inches from my natural waist size. Um, but I, even though I can in weather like this, <laughs> I don't. Um, I cinch down tight enough that it won't shift. <laughs> so, and, and also I have to be having a vain day where I'm like, no, make it smaller. Because <laughs> <laughs> then my bustle would look really big. Yeah. yeah. I used to work in Tombstone. And oh. I did the Old West show for about seven months, and I lived in those corsets with the plastic pony. They bend. Oh, they yes. do. Yes. They, do. Oh, oh, gosh, they bend. But yeah, I think when I finished, my waist was this big. Oh. Yeah, but you're wearing plastic boning, which is, you know. I'd replace it quite often. A crime against humanity, mm. really. You could have just replaced it with like a spiral boning. That's yeah, the thing is, I couldn't find anyone that had it there, and I didn't have oh. like, internet access at the time. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, because I order it in rolls. Yes, <laughs> that's the best, isn't it? It is, because then you just crimp your little, and you can make it the exact Do size you, you need. Yeah, the little tips. The thing I find though is, if you're crimping the tips on your spiral bones at 5 a.m while watching Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you can't expect perfection, that's for sure. No. And your cats are entertained because <laughs> things really fly. No, don't so tired. I've learned that lesson. That's always when you put things on, like one's the right way, the other one's backwards. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Like your sleeves. I know, uh. like upside down, inside out. Right. <laughs> I have one bolero that I just never finished. It was this like brown coat um, steampunk smash up. I had the badges. It was so great. I was so excited. And I'm like, I keep having this one problem with this one sleeve. No matter what I do or how I mark it, I sewed it upside down and like in the wrong sky four times. <laughs> and at that point, I literally took the bolero and I set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> because I was stuck. <laughs> Sometimes, if the third time the charm doesn't work, you just have to put it away. And by putting it away, catching it on fire, sometimes it's the best way. It was cotton, so it burned quite nicely. <laughs> I took off the badges. They were more worthy to me than the bolero <laughs> in the morning. So, um, anyone else? Some questions? Yes, madam. How do you make your own bustle? Well, I use a cage bustle um, as a foundation garment, and I use the truly Victorian lobster bustle pattern uh, because I find it actually very quick to make up, especially once you have sort of figured out your measurements, and the instructions are impeccable. What I like about the truly Victorian patterns is even if I don't understand why she's asking me to do something, if I do it, it will turn out beautifully. So I just have to have faith in truly Victorian. 
It's like joining the Church of Cthulhu, but more corpses. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I use that one, and I like it because it holds like an accordion. So I can sit, I can drive in my car, I can like do all of my improv and pratfalls, and um, it, it gives a really nice foundation. So there are lots of bustle forms, bustle cages, bustle pillows you can find. And I heard last night uh, from Catherine Stewart that Damsel in Distress has like a free online tutorial oh. for making a lobster tail bustle. I like the lobster tail, it's lighter and cooler, which is like um, bonus points in this climate. Yeah. Very. Yeah, right. But I like to have the little emphasis of the cage. It not only makes my um, bustle look larger, which is good, but it keeps my skirt sort of off my skin. Didn't you do that video with Catherine about the bustle? You know, I couldn't do that because I had mono. Oh. <laughs> All the random ones to catch. I know. And it turns out if you catch it in your 30s, it's much, much worse. We won't talk about it. <laughs> I was, yeah, it was terrible. I didn't. I just watched it over okay. and over again with great joy. So, yeah. Good. Catherine Stewart did. You know, the baby got back. It's baby got bustled. Yeah, it's a great video. I think she did it under the moniker of Manticosa. Yeah, I think she did. So you can still find that on the YouTubes. And um, it's really delightful. Lots of bustles. So and you don't have to do a bustle cage, but uh, don't be intimidated by them. They look really complicated. But when you get the pattern, it's actually five pieces with boning channels that you sew in with twill tape, and it never touches your skin. Boom! Bustle. The pillow bustles work pretty well too, though. I've had a couple costumes where I've done um, the pillow bustles for smaller bustles. And, and they're quick and simple. They're quick and simple for beginners. Yeah, no, they You know, the thing I, I like about the pillow bustle too is it's really, if you're doing a natural form mm -hmm. bustle, I still think you need a little bit of, you know, boom, 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 a little emphasis. And, and when you're hot, you can just take a nap. But right, mm -hmm. but you take your butt off first, of course. <laughs> as it were. Um, otherwise, I find them. I find the pillow bustles a little bit hotter, so that's why yes. I use the cage so much because it's airier instead of dense. Yeah, right. There's no, you know, cotton fill or poly fill or whatever sitting in a certain area that's already getting hot. So, yes. Other questions. Yes! I'm not sure how well you can hear me with the mask, but um, fabrics. Sewing with different fabrics with my machine, I found I have a lot of troubles with stretchy fabrics. Yeah, you have to change your stitch length and sometimes the stitch itself to mm -hmm. work with the stretchier fabrics, um, depending upon what machine you have. You can always go onto YouTube and find a video and they'll tell you which one to use, like if you're using a Nidge or a lycra or something, mm -hmm. it varies on what stitch you want to use because that way you can avoid puckering. Or, and you got to also be careful because sometimes, like, you'll stretch one piece as you're going and then it'll ruffle it up. Zigzag is sort of a safe bet, but not like a really big zigzag, sort of a narrow one. Yeah. And some machines have a almost lightning bolt shaped zigzag, yeah, that's the perfect one for any. Um, Stretchy fabrics. Yes. I had a really strange question. When no. you are a measuring for the corset, are you doing it all the way to the waist or a little bit longer than that? Oh, I take both measurements separately. So um, I have a corset panel this afternoon at six. We can talk about it a little bit more. But I measure from my armpit to my waist. Because I need to know where my waist is. Not everyone's waist is the same place. And the waist position is highly critical. Mm -hmm. You do not want to put your waist at your hip bones or at your floating rib. <laughs> That's horrific. <laughs> and then for this part, I actually don't necessarily need a number. But I need to see where your, your bones are so you're able to sit. 
because you do not want to course it so long that it covers your hips and the bones dig in and you're like, sitting? No. <laughs> no, I never sit. I stand for 20 hours a day, don't you? <laughs> so <laughs> that... Reclining. Yeah, no, like I mean, I do a lot of this. Down, just lay down, just go chipper. Right, mm -hmm. no, I have done that. <laughs> Usually for giggles. But, um, yeah, so, but this measurement I take separately. And then this one I sort of, part of it is I've made a lot of corsets. And I always do a mock-up, which is invaluable and not a step you get to skip with a good corset. Yeah, and you can get cheap fabric by the yard for like a dollar, dollar fifty at Walmart and just it doesn't have to be pretty if you're just for your mock up that way you can pattern to see if it fits you. Right. Mm -hmm. And that you can sit. Or even old sheets. Sheets are great, but mm -hmm. you know when I'm doing corset mock up, I don't want anything with a lot of stretch. So I try and find something that's not similar. Yeah, that's like maybe dark the same kind of fabric. Or canvas. Um, or something without too much stretch. So do you need a person to help you stretch everything like in the old movies? Like oh, that? when I get dressed? Um, so I can dress myself, actually. I'm fortunate. Do you make long strings like this? The strings are long, and also I'm able to do this. And, oh, I should show you. I can do this. Oh. I know I'm old, but I'm limber. <laughs> At least in that regard. Please do not ask me to like bend from the waist. <laughs> so, um, so I can corset myself, but I get bored with it because it takes wretchedly long to get into one of these Victorian corsets on my own because it's it's a very slow process. So I usually, you know, get some kind soul to do it for me. Um, and then it takes five to ten minutes to put it on. But if I have to put it on, I get bored at the half hour mark. So, but I, can, I put on everything today myself, except for the corset. I have my friend lace it for me. Ladies in the 19th century had ladies' maids. Bless them. Well, the richer ones did. Yes. Well, and the middle class ladies often Some, yes. did. Poorer ladies, you know. Did not have any. And they probably did not wear like the full bustle gown to the factory, so there was that too. Bonus points, no bustle in the factories. Thank you. When you make the mock-ups, do you put in the uh, the stays? I mean, what about you, Jonna? Not usually. I just make it like I just there's no. It's not fussy. It's I'm gonna end up getting rid of it anyway, mm -hmm. so I will just do simple stitches just to see how it feels and fits. Okay, okay. What I do is make sure that either myself or the client is wearing a bra that they like so their bosom is in the proper position. And if I'm getting a lot of waist creases because they're very curvy, um, then I will put a couple of bones in just to smooth those creases out and make sure it's just because they're curvy and the fabric would normally crease there, okay. not because I've done something boneheaded. <laughs> but otherwise, like, very, just as shapes, right? It's just the shapes. Yeah. Just because it, it's not going to be perfect. You're not going to reuse it for anything. Right. So it's You just want to make sure it's not Another loose question. too tight in areas. Did anyone try to put it like a bra that snaps in the front? What do you mean? The, With a corset instead of just stretching the back. Oh, oh yes. um, you can get corsets that lace in the front. Oh, yeah. <coughs> um, or I, yeah, like you, you're wearing something that, you know. It's not a full corset though. No, but it's the same idea. Yeah. So you can do the lace in the front. And that is like that's handy if you can't reach the back or if you want something quick. But the thing about a corset with a busk and back laces, it's actually quicker on and off, usually, because I don't have to completely unlace it and then completely reinsert the laces every time. My lace stays in, it's a continuous lace, and so I busk up, which looks really complicated, but it's you get used to it, it's not that hard, it's like funky snaps. And then the laces are already there and ready to go. 
It's a skill like tying your shoes. You know, you have to learn where the rabbit ears go. <laughs> Um, because I've only worked with uh, pre-made ones, uh, do you use uh, one continuous string or two strings for your corsets? Um, are you using plastic or metal boning? What kind of boning are you using? Because a lot of well, I, I'm just curious because uh, when I was stuck in those plastic ones, I would always have to cut the string and have it lace up to, uh, right in the middle. To the of middle, yeah. Mm -hmm. That cut, stopped it from bending as much. It still mm -hmm. bends and stuff, but that would help with the plastic one is to have two. Uh, most of the time, I just use one. Just depends on what kind of, like, where I want my bow to be. More decoratively for me. Right. But do you make um, I size? do. Um, when I've made them, it just kind of depends on the corset. When I've made underbusts, I've done a single. And when I've made full, I usually do a double, the tie in the middle. So, um, I've... It's sort of a bit of personal preference, I think, but I do a single one, even with my long, elaborate ones like today. But I have what I call bunny ears at the waist. And so it's a continuous pull, but there's this bunny ear at the waist, and that I end up tying it in the middle too. But it's just, it doesn't really matter if it's one or two at that point, except that you want to tie off at the waist. And for me, it means like, there are less knots I have to worry about, and I'm a lazy person. <laughs> so I like go for ease, really. Yeah. Yes, madam. Um, when it comes to picking fabric, so you've got your pattern, you've got your whole thing, you're ready to go, you're ready to pick your fabric, and then you get the weather forecast for whatever event you're going to. What? Substitutions would be good for, say, taffeta, if your pattern calls for taffeta, or a heavy fabric like that. So I'm sorry, it's 118 hours, but I'm not wearing taffeta <laughs> down the street. I'm sorry. Most of the time, by the time I get the weather report, I'm already done. <laughs> so I just suck it up and live with it. I might substitute like a certain piece out for another piece, but once you've got your costume made, unless you scrap it all together and do it another day, there's nothing. But would there be a substitution for, it's almost like a cotton blend for something like a heavier fabric like taffeta or, you know, it's a little bit so I breathable get, for, you know, I might somewhere. Get, I might get a polished cotton because it's about the shine if you're going for the shine. Um, I would actually probably design something here, frankly, I almost never design costumes that would need taffeta because it can be hot here. I was just using that as an example. But I mean like I sort of like have some 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 fabrics that are on my not to use list <laughs> as a general rule. Like polyester. I mean I will use it sometimes, it's lovely, but generally I just avoid it. Because I never know. I may decide I want to wear that thing in July. Or it could be a December where we're like, yeah, right, you know, like we actually melted the igloos for fun in Tucson. And it was really great. The streets caught on fire. I mean, <laughs> it's 85 here regularly on Christmas Day. So you never know. So, I mean, I avoid some fabrics just as a rule, which helps. Um, but substitutions like... I look for anything in a natural fiber that has sort of the hand and the, the look I'm going for. Mm -hmm. And if I'm trying to do something fancy, then I look at what they did in the historical record because they didn't have access to a lot of the synthetic fibers. Now sometimes what they did is they were like, I'm rich, I'm going to use silk. <laughs> and most of us who cosplay, we can't be like, yeah, I'll just you know, make that ball gown out of silk and then I'll go to the masquerade and wear it one time, it'll be totally cool. It's a thousand dollar dress, you know. So, um... <laughs> and then you ruin when you wear it? I'm sorry, what? And then can't you ruin while you're wearing it into whatever... I bet you're going to. I think the ball left a piece at some point in time. Ruin. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I'm like trying not to laugh right now because my friend Kyoshi is finishing his bell ball gown and it's all silk. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I think that's delightful. I'd yeah, like I'm to sure see it. I'm sure it looks beautiful, though. Right. I just hope he gets 
sign. <laughs> oh, and only really for today. <laughs> is he still sewing? I don't know. I keep getting Facebook updates that say, like, maybe I should just give up. <laughs> oh, maybe no. I should he, just he was it for tomorrow. Yeah, he was working on the last two panels and realized that he was two yards short. <gasps> oh. 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 oh, yeah. That's that, I don't know tomorrow. what's going on. And yeah, it's for today. <laughs> Gandalf, are you okay? Yes. <laughs> oh, are you helping Kyoshi? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> we need an intervention for your friend. Two yards short. That is a horrific thing that can happen mm -hmm. when you when you un when you think you've planned. All mm -hmm. oh, in it. Goodbye, Thank ladies. You. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for all guys. You're yeah. welcome. Please come to the corsetry panel if you want more specific details. I just wanted to know. Of course. <laughs> Happy to answer. Thank you. Bon chance. No, I think we've all run into that where we, when you first, especially when you first start, or like when you, like even when you get a pattern and it says you need two yards and you use the two yards and it's like, no, this is more like three yards. Well, and the thing I found when I was like first starting with making garments was I didn't understand that every fabric will pretty much shrink when you wash it. And first of all, I know I, since I was teaching myself to make garments, no one had told me about pre-washing. <laughs> so those were some adventures. But then once I started pre-washing, I didn't like factor in shrinkage to my fabric purchases. And so I'd buy exactly what it called for on the package, and I'd wash it, and I'd try it, and I'd iron it, and they'd be like, why is this six inches too short? Six inches, I just need six inches. And then I had a lot of things with it were like off brain and weird, but like the garment was completed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd always recommend buying at least half a yard, if not a yard, more than for shrinkage, for accidents. And then what you have left over, you can maybe make a quilt or something. <laughs> Random. <laughs> or a hat. <laughs> Romeo was the company because right? they like sent, they, according to them, they sent like two different packages of the silk that he never received. Oh. And he's just been fighting with this company. So for all we know, they never sent that last two. They may not have. So <laughs> it's been an adventure. Poor thing. Um, if he can, Piece it with cotton and cover it. I say these these are the the, the ruffles. Oh, oh yeah, I'm curious. Um, when he did his ruffles, did he put like I know because isn't it ruffled if I'm remembering correctly? Yeah. It's, did he um put that silk underneath the ruffles or use an alternate fabric? I have no idea. That's the only process I've seen is the, the hoop skirt and all the petticoats. Okay. Oh, good petticoats. So, oh, yeah. So for he, those, he made his know, own corset. It's if you're doing something with hand. ruffles, you can put, like, because the ruffle's going to cover it. You could put another cheaper fabric that's still sturdy underneath that's hidden to, to, for the layers. Yeah, in fact, it's not a bad plan anyway, because the closer you get to your hem, the dirtier it gets. So um, that cheaper fabric may be easier to just, like, wash at home with a little spot washing, especially if you're using something like silk, which is going to be yeah. basically dry clean only. Some silks you can wash if you pre-treat them um, the right way, but some will lose their luster if you wash them. So if you like the luster, mm. <laughs> yeah, I like luster. <laughs> Shiny. Yeah, it's so shiny. Why do I never wear shiny clothes? Yes. Also, what I found is when, because um, me and my sister were learning to sew. I mean, this has been a fun process. Fun process. <laughs> it's an adventure. It is. It definitely is. What I found is that definitely go over on your fabric requirements, especially if you need to adjust your pattern a couple inches, say you're a rather hippie woman or yes. busty woman. You need to be able to add a little bit extra fabric to your pattern and also lay it out first before you cut anything to make sure that the pattern is laid out correctly, that you're going with the grain of the fabric, the nap straight, your, all your points are lining up, then cut it out. Because if you don't and you just throw the pattern pieces on there, it's almost like a plan of, you have to have a plan of attack on how to cut out the fabric. 
because if you don't cut it out right, you're going to have to go back to the store and buy more fabric because you've ruined half of it. You didn't even lay out right. And the other thing is about layout. I don't know if you all have found this, but uh, companies like Simplicity and Butterick lay their patterns out on the fabric very inefficiently. They yes. Say. But also, you'll notice if you go online, you'll find they have updates. They will have information whether it's about the pattern itself is incorrect or even something's wrong with one of the pattern pieces. So a lot of times with the more complicated patterns, you need to go online to see if they have any updates. Yeah, do they do update. It's sort of like the newspaper releasing a, you know, retraction. <laughs> so another thing about simplicity, butter it calls, all of those, those patterns run small. They do. Be, and if you read the sizes, it's not always accurate. And no, some of them are run big. It's weird. So it's always a matter of you need to tailor it to your mm -hmm. size because nobody's the perfect little shape they shape. Which is why size. I say make sure you've got extra fabric to make additions. <laughs> yeah. And, and also it's easier to go bigger and then take it smaller. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when in doubt, over adjust. Yes, you can take off. You can't add back in. No, <laughs> boy, no, you can't. And then you just have to add ruffles and hope for the best. <laughs> then it's like, oh, I'll just try adding another panel. That didn't work either. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, let's just put in a gusset. Let's see how that goes. It needs a gusset now, doesn't it? And then I'll cover it in a ruffle. That works <laughs> all the time. It's steampunk, so that actually kind of does work all the time. Oh, ruffles! You'll never know. Broke your hinges uneven, you can just pull it up, pick up. A pickup's a great for uneven hands, it's true. Or just, you know, kind of hot weather. Right, yes, yes. So, but most of the time, especially with beginning sewers, the other cosplayers aren't going to even notice if your hem's not perfect or anything like that. You can't sew a straight line anyway yet. No, neither can I. I have a little magnet I put, and that's how I just push the fabric to the magnet and go. Well, it's, there's a guide on my sewing machine, right? <laughs> they have, yeah, they have the, the measurements. Yeah. yeah. It okay, so I'll be sewing, and all of a magnet. sudden I'll notice that it's starting to veer this way. Yeah, no, there's a magnet you buy. It's like five, six bucks. And it just attaches to that plate where you want your, you know, you five eighths, half inch, whatever. It's like a sewing and you just bumper. Can you use that like Joanne's? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Cool. And it makes it so much easier because then I just, my seams are all the same because I couldn't sew straight in my life a minute on it. <laughs> and the other thing is, you only have to sew so straight. <laughs> yeah. Most of the fabric hides. No one is, oh, all right, two <laughs> things. One. Almost no one is going to come up close enough to your seams. <laughs> oh, right. No, no, I assure you, no one comes up to my corset and stares at my seams. <laughs> I don't think you seem to the person they notice. No. And um, so they don't, it doesn't have to be so straight. It just has to be straight enough. What you're avoiding is the dog legs where you get like this number. Otherwise, if there's like a little wiggle, doesn't matter. I mean, I have seen work by very highly skilled professional people. I could only dream of sewing like these people, and I could only dream of selling like these people sell. They make gorgeous things. People rave about them on the internet and dream of owning them. And their seams aren't straight either. <laughs> it's very liberating when you go and you're like, Oh, that's your top stitching? All right then. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> Straightish. Very good. So, I mean, the straight thing, like, that was really intimidating to me when I started, too. Yeah. It was because you want to be perfectionist and you want to make it look so good that you get focused on the seams. But when in actuality, like you said, nobody's going to come up with measuring tape. No. No, and they're not even going to check your top stitching, <laughs> right? Unless you're me. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> she goes, unless you're me. I mean, you could check it out. It's all the black on black. Down. <laughs> no, what? Look, I'm the table cluster are upside, upside down. down. <laughs> not this way. No, 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 not mine. Mine's the right side up. <laughs> That's weird. I got the proper table, not the askew one. Well, technically, <laughs> on your little 
Old lines are a little askew there. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's better now. Yes. I keep wanting to do steampunk stuff, and I mean, the initial plan was to try and attempt it this year, but I started losing weight, and then I'm like, I don't want to figure out which side of the spectrum I'll end up on, so I was out. And I made curtains for my car instead. <laughs> <laughs> See, not you yeah. like that. So I, I've learned to sew before, and I bought a sewing machine, and I am capable. But I don't know where to start, and I well, I don't have enough. I'm a teacher, too, so the fundage is amazing. So I don't yes. Know where do you, to now, when you say start, start do you have an idea of what you want to make? At all? No, no, it's like I, I'm one of those people where I want to go full boat. Yes. All right. But do I you know what you want to like? Do you know the pieces you want? Do you know like what type of skirt? No, what I'm type getting of myself corset? so caught up on okay. having a full and complete idea where I don't know where to start. I'm going, you know, just well, make a skirt, but I'm like, oh, but you can't wear just the skirt because you need to have the this and the that. Well, you can so. always go on, say, Pinterest or even Google and look up like skirt ideas and then you can save them like into a folder and then go through that folder and just narrow it down till you find that skirt you like. And the other thing is, um, sometimes it's very helpful to have a focus. So I don't necessarily advocate that one has to have a persona or a name or to like do what I do and inhabit a personality all the time. <laughs> but if you can have like a concept, um, like this is going to be my engineer costume, or this is my traveling dress, then every project starts in pieces, right? Yeah. But if you have that focus of your plan, that's what I do for clients, is I actually sketch out a whole costume and then we usually do a piece at a time until they have the complete thing. And I, I like to make mine mix and match yeah. so that their pieces can go with other things. So I usually have a focus of a whole wardrobe. Like, oh, your favorite colors are X and this is your career trajectory and this is where you're from. So your wardrobe's going to look like this. So I'll make you this piece, and then you can wear it with anything you add to your wardrobe. But you can you can narrow that down to just like that one costume and, and make a plan and just like sort of pick away at that plan. I mean, it is overwhelming, right? It is. That's why I'm saying if you just start with the one piece, like and then pick that piece, and then you could build from there. But you have to build the first piece to be able to get to the second piece. Yes. Yeah, Pinterest is a horrible time saying I almost deleted off my phone yesterday. No, blasphemy, I love Pinterest. I know, I follow Pinterest. Now we're going to have later, and you're like, dear God, what am I doing with my life? It gets slow at work, and I'll be on Pinterest. It's horrible. I said wonderful the same time. It's like, look at this one, and these other 12. <laughs> right? You want to make mechanized angel wings and crap, and you're like, you don't even have a skirt yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you're making wings, I'd start with the wings because they take 10 times longer than the mm -hmm. skirt. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and you can always thrift a lot of items. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing about steampunk, and any cosplay, I think, is that it can be an ongoing project. So you make sort of your base, and then you decide, well, I want to have two skirts because I have my factory worker dress, and then my I get to go out on Sunday and have tea dress, right? So you're not ever going to be limited to the one costume, and you can always add to or change or perfect as you learn more, and, or, um, mix, and match. or mix and match. And I know here in Phoenix, Tucson, where I live, there are lots of makers. In Tucson, we host regular workshops where you can come and say, work on a project with the group and learn a skill and add a piece to your wardrobe as like a workshop thing. Like last year we taught leather harness and I taught hat making and bustle making and we've done holsters and 
I lose track. But so you can kind of build as you go through the year with, with workshops, with friends, or by asking people in the community, like, hey, oh, can yeah. I come over and do a stitch and, and complain? <laughs> 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 I'd like to stitch and complain with you. We can call it that. Yeah, that's what we're calling it, because we're Disney right now. <laughs> Did that help? Yeah. All right, Chris. You can also, like, buttonhole any of us. Yeah. Gandalf is magic. So, <laughs> um, and after the panel, we can answer more. More questions? Would you say that making, like, bustiers instead of corsets would be a nice segue into corset making? Because I know that corset making can be kind of complicated. complicated. Yeah, well, the, I would say usually... It depends on the type of where the cuts, because I know the ones like where they have the inserts, mm -hmm. those are the harder ones to make. When you're doing the ones that just curve around, those are a little bit easier. So it depends on what you're doing. I mean, it depends yeah. on the type of course that you're looking for. I think the easiest project in corset making to start out with is like an underbus corset yeah. mm -hmm. or um, a Spanish belt or corselet. Now, that's actually meant to go over a corset, and I wouldn't mess around with the Spanish belt or corselet not over a corset because it's short and the bones will dig into your hips, which is agonizing. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, We've all been there. No, we can stab. Well, I've got a couple of patterns for bustier that are just, um, they don't have like the cups or anything, they just go straight up. Yeah. Those like are straps. easier <laughs> ones then. So that would be a nice segue into like getting your feet wet with corset making. It's yeah. all it's almost like making a corset, except mm -hmm. that I guess there's less boning and different materials. Five mm -hmm. minutes? Ten. Ten. Ten, thank you. Okay. Ten minutes. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> thank you, madam. Um, what are some mistakes that you would probably try to avoid that you guys would make when making corsets and such? Find cheap material. Yes. yes. <laughs> material is a, a very important one. Um, depending on, you know, some of them call for linings. Make sure you have your linings and your other pieces are cut properly because if you don't cut them the same, they're not going to match. They're not going to line up. Ooh. Yeah. And then when they twist after you've made it, <laughs> <laughs> terrible things. Um, Oh, make sure you pull all your pins out. I've had so many. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a pin in something. And I, I, I wasn't wearing the corset, but they were, and I was trying to help them, and I got stabbed. I'm like, how did I get stabbed just touching you? <laughs> right? Oh, I mean, yeah, the pins. I'm trying to think, because those were really good ones. Um, um, your bone in the right size. Don't go too big or too small. Right. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, do come to the corset panel, because we'll talk more about this. But my first corset I made, my first Victorian corset, I cut my corset bones exactly the full length oh. of, the, of the channel. And then I was like, how do I put my binding on? I can't sew through metal. And then I'm like trying to sort of fake it, but I had my bone pushing right up against that binding, and it like just cut through the stitches. So you always want your bones to be almost, but not quite, up to your binding. Like it's mm, smaller. So I usually plan like an inch and a quarter shorter than the length of the channel because that gives me half inch for the binding and then an eighth inch between the bone and the binding stitches. Math, as far as I go. Yes, sewing it requires a lot of math. When I sit there and talk to them, they're like, okay, you want to do this pattern? And then you start working out your math, and you're like, okay, we have to do this, divide it by this, and then, like, there's more math in sewing than I realize. I'm like, no, this is a lot. Yeah. A lot of math. A lot of fractions, too. Yes. yes. Fortunately, uh, not advanced calculus yet. <laughs> or trade. I don't know, a some of your bustles. Uh, yeah, right, no, especially train-shaped bustles. <laughs> Um, I guess, though, my, the biggest mistake I would avoid is not doing the mock-ups for complicated patterns. Like a skirt, all right, you 
make it up. All you have to do is make sure it hit, fits your hip and your waist. Now you can add darts or, or pleats or ruffles to make it fit if it's too big. Whereas a corset, you can't. A corset, a shirt, a jacket, um, anything really tailored. You want to like mark up the part that has to fit and lie just the right way. And it seems like it's just such a tedious step. But, but then if you don't, you waste your fabric when you cut it out and it doesn't fit right. You waste your time. And then for me, I waste a lot of hours crying. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my cats are like watching me hide in the corner while I shout recriminations at the garment. And so not fire. Uh, yes. <laughs> Well, that one, that one time. Uh, we have five more minutes. Any more questions? What are the online resources to find the Tucson? I'm going to be actually in Tucson later this month. Oh, fantastic. Out of all ironies for a calculus thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is so delightful in so many ways. Do you teach math? I, I mean, I want you to understand that I like you, but I'm not very mathy outside of sewing. So, but like, boom, math. So um, you can find us on the Facebooks at uh, the two, uh, Facebook slash Tucson Steampunk Society. Um, and you can also <coughs> look for the Tucson Steampunk Society Tinkerers, because I thought it was funny at the time. And um, more errs is always funny. <laughs> and uh, that's our really active social group where we share our projects and we talk about how to make things and we talk about events and we <laughs> ask for help or resources. And really, we don't like check your geography. <coughs> you don't have to like be a card carrying to Sonin to ask us questions online. You know, we're like, are you fun and like steampunk? <coughs> Very good. Join the group. It's an easy process. What about you all? What are your resources here? Uh, well, Facebook, there's the Arizona Steampunk Society for the 18 plus. There's the Arizona Penny Dreadful. Now this, uh, is there a... What? Fun group? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and there's a, there's a sewing group too, like sewing for steampunks on Facebook. There is, um, I can't remember. I think Lady Ever Brennan Sparks. She does, I don't remember the name of the group though. Um, I'm sure if you ask, in either of those places, though, yeah. we'll be able to like link it to you. Um, and then there's a generic like worldwide group on sewing for steampunk. That um, is good. Now, I mean, you won't maybe meet some of those people in person, but people are great about answering questions. I think there are a lot of nice people. Absolutely. The the not nice people find that they don't have what they're looking for in steampunk because we are nice. They move on someplace else. We don't know where. <laughs> but it's a very friendly community. Some black hole. Of yes. Places. Black hole, without gears, poor creatures. And bustles, bustleless, clutterless. All right, one last question, because we're just at time. Hi, what do you carry as an emergency repair kit? Huh. Oh. Duct tape? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Duct tape no, you're not. is totally worthy. <laughs> um, safety pins? Yeah. Safety pins? Safety pins are your bestest friend. Double-sided tape. Yeah, fashion tape is great if you've got it. Um, gorilla tape. Mm, yeah. Oh, one time I had to use electrician's tape. Oh, wow. Yes! I had a hoop skirt that came undone, mm. and I still have a scar from that one. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so, tape. Totally valuable. Yeah. Do not mark tape. tape. Best invention of the 20th century. It's grand. <laughs> but safety pins are a must have. Yes. Yes. I don't really carry super glue. I don't even use super glue that often. I'll use E6000. E6, yeah. Or if it's on fabric on fabric, I'll use hot glue. Just keep in mind, you don't want to go outside. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, the thing about a lot of the adhesives is um, we're in Arizona. And the thing about, that's even like with the, the like, if you use like Warbler, don't use Warbler. You don't Arizona. Not use Warbler in Arizona. <laughs> it's so easy to use, but it melts. Because it's Arizona. And it's hot. Yeah. Yes. And it doesn't yeah. matter if it's a dry heat. No. no. It's so no. a confession of it. Right. Thank you, Gandalf, for braving it <laughs> in your full beard. You don't even have your summer beard. No. <laughs> it's been a very hard spring. No time to cut. Oh, it's terrible. So I think that's it for us, right? Thank you so much. Your turn. Uh, a what? That. That, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that's it, that's it for today. That's as much movement forward as you get. <laughs> Hey gamers, Jim here from Creative Play and Podcast Network. If you're in the Tucson area this September and October, I've got a special message for you. Hey, this is Karen from RinCon. We are having our convention from September 30th through October 2nd here in Tucson, Arizona. Come out and uh, play every kind of game under the sun with us. We've got role-playing, board games, mini figs. Um, CCGs, we've got Artemis, we have panels with special guests, and this year the theme is steampunk. So uh, get out your, uh, dust off your dirigibles, get out your chapeaus, and put them on, come on down. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition, and Scion, Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.